we've got enough room there. Yeah. 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 I might actually leave this slack. I can move. I can go down there. This is 550 paracord. I'm using. It's a 550 pound braking string. Wow. What we use on parachutes. So um, it's good, strong stuff. But. Um, and it worked, it helped to get it up into, into place. Okay then, Dad? So, uh, oh, the seat at the back side. How's that? That's great. Right, you got it? Yeah. It's going, isn't it? Come there, right? So if I come up here, void the map. This is um, this is the thing that I came up with for uh, uh, my hammock, and it's worked brilliantly for this as well. Cool. So if I get over this side, right, and then we need to, need to put that in here. If we can get it under there. I think maybe for now, where are we? That will be alright. If we if we both got the front weight right, like that, the fingers out, make sure when the boat goes down, you're not going to trap your fingers. We can even just unhook this up a bit more. Lower it down nice and easy. That's terrific. That was a piece of cake. Yeah. Thanks for coming around. That is exactly what I wanted it to do. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, put the put the gone better. Mm. Right. I think the fact's in order, don't you? Yeah, that sounds smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadie here from Dale Skidmore Second Hand Tyres. Welcome to part 17 of the boat restoration. I'm just starting to mark out the keel to mark out the plank of oak and uh, cut that at length and then start to plane it up and get it ready and drilled and fitted. I think I'll do the keel first because that is the biggest piece of uh, the plank I've got to cut and then the uh, build runners are just uh, plain sailing after that really in comparison. So we'll uh, get down to marking up the plank and uh, go from there. There's a couple of things to uh, note about this, one of which I expected and that is that uh, the wood has bowed sideways so it veers off to the right as we look at it and secondly the uh, laser guide which I was following is biased to one side of the blade not up the centre of the blade. I kept it proud on both sides of the line but this side 
the second side of the cup back coming to, back towards the camera there is uh, the laser is actually further over that way so the blade ends up coming this way so this side is well proud of the line and this side here is more or less close to the line the bend I'm not too worried about because as it goes up towards the prow the, the keel tapers down anyway and so by the time it gets to the other end it's going to be quite uh, flexible and will come back into line I can plane the, uh, some of the curve out anyway and I can always steam it if it moves any more I can steam it back the other way but I sort of knew it was going to do this because it isn't quite the wood I wanted the grain goes uh, I can't see it I can't see it properly if it goes that way or or that way but it's nearly vertical it's as vertical as I could have got so we use what we got and not worry about it too much well the keel wood has been laid out on the keel overnight and the bend is still quite apparent so uh, I was thinking I might try first of all just straighten it out a bit with a hot air gun and some water uh, it's a method that I've seen used on walking sticks and um, also bow makers use it as well and then if that doesn't work then I might just steam it it sort of bends from well generally all the way along really I suppose it's a, a graceful arc it actually brings me to uh, the uh, kickback that I had yesterday with this circular saw I've had the circular saw now for just about a year and I've only used it for doing the roof cutting the sterling board panels that I used for the roof and they're very stable and also they're only uh, I think they were I think they're half half an inch or 12 mil thick, 15 mil, something like that. So they're not very thick, they're very stable because they're made of uh, shavings really, wood shavings like a, off a plate. And they don't really move around. This plank, as I got through towards the middle, the kerf closed up and pinched, especially uh, from right from the back end and when I stopped to reposition myself I backed the saw out of the cut so that I was starting off load but the back end had gone into where it started to pinch so where's the blade and it kicked up so um, I was standing in the right position because I was off to one side so that it, went, it goes straight back but um, with things like that you've got to be careful and uh, I I don't it's the first time I've ever owned a circular saw even because I don't like power tools particularly because they can do a lot of damage in a lot of, in a very short time not just to humans but also to the wood that you use them on so I most of the time will cut things with a saw a hand saw um, it's only really since I've worked on this I've used a table saw and this circular saw in the last year before that I've cut most things by hand I know um, the stuff that I've cut doesn't necessarily take a long time because it's only a shorter length but uh, I've always shied away from using too many power tools because uh, the wood I use in work I do is expensive and it can cost a lot of money in an instant if you lose control of a, of a power tool so um, I'm not an experienced power tool user really apart from a drill, a pillar drill and a jigsaw uh, and jigsaws really I, I really like um, and you can do a lot with a jigsaw but this was a, a new experience to me and probably a timely re reminder or a warning as well to be vigilant and careful I don't know whether an extra bit of pressure and uh, awareness that way would have kept it in the, uh, in the cut or what I don't know but the solution to it was to drive a wedge to open the curve back up from the back end 
and then you can start offload and then move into the cut and carry on with the cut. So that's a little warning to me and uh, I felt it should be passed on. Most people know I'm preaching that are converted anyway, so, but there is one or two people who are as inexperienced with them as I am, so uh, I th felt it was worth passing on. Got the end tied up with a piece of uh, cord and a slight overbend in it, and then heating up the top and the sides more than the bottom of the keel board because wood doesn't stretch, it compresses. If you're going to bend wood, you can you actually compress in the inside of the curve rather than stretching the outside. So I'll leave it to cool off like that for a bit and we'll see what happens. It might bring it straight, it might not. But I'm trying this as a quick method rather than set up the steamer and steaming it for an hour in the bag, which I know will work, but if this works, it's quicker. I don't need to take all of the bend out just enough so that I can plane it out the rest of the way. And it's taken some of the bend out I think by a bit of planing in certain areas it will straighten up even more because it doesn't need to be as wide as, as it is. It just want, want a little step in I think just to uh, make it look better. So I'm going to sharpen up the plane iron now and then do some planing. This plain iron I've had for about 25 years, something like that, and I had the inside face ground with slots, which when you're working on certain woods with a lot of figure in them, helps to stop tear out because it breaks up into smaller shavings so you're not tearing, you're not digging out on a, a wide area digging out on lots of little areas and it helps stop tear out. It's getting a bit worn down now. Also I use a sharpening guide. This one's an Eclipse honing guide. I use it for chisels and for the plain irons. Because I can't, uh, even after a lot of practice, I can just about do it on certain things, but this produces the same results every time. Because you set it up so it's a certain length out from the end of the iron, of the guide, before you run it up and down the sharpening stone. Well, as you can see, the uh, hot air gun and the water wasn't very successful, so I'm going to finished steaming this now in the bag. It's been in for about half an hour up to steam. So it's got about probably another half hour, 35-40 minutes. And then I'm going to clamp it onto the bench. The middle clamp is just one side of an arrow I've drawn, which is about the middle of the bend I want to make, where I want to put the clamp to clamp it to the bench. And I've got a block at each end of the bench, which will help to pull it into line. And then there's a length of wood which will jack up the far end which is already starting to sag even more I can see. I uh, I was hoping that I was going to be successful but this end is far too thick to bend with anything but this sort of steam. As Sticky Dave, our drummer, 
said the other day when I was moaning about not being able to get hold of a plank of oak, maybe it's better to travel oakfully than to arrive. It's a dry old stick our sticky. It's been steaming for about an hour and 20 minutes and it's cramped up now with a opposite bow on it so that would hopefully bring it back in line because I expect it's going to spring a bit but if it's uh, if it stays like that then I'll have to bend it back the other way so I'll have to wait and see not an exact science when you're sort of guessing like this. Well there's the wooden keel set on top of the boat and it's roughly shaped. There is still a bit of a lateral bend in it but I was expecting that anyway but if I fix it from the back end I can uh, push it into shape and it will hold its shape once it's all screwed together because it's only a slight bend and the uh, end of it is tapered off to fall into line with the prow. There's maybe a little bit more fine tuning to go on it just to make the curve a little bit more fair. There's the uh, two rails cut out now for the bilge runners. There's a lot of tidying up to do on them. They didn't move like the original piece did. For the keel but I think that's probably due to the fact that it tapered down quite a bit from one end to the other and it moved at the thinnest end because that was the weakest part so it was easier to easier for that to move than anything else so these look pretty straight once I've tidied them up with the plane down to the lines that you can see there I shall plane up the faces and then put them in the bag and bend them with the steam so they can form to the contour of the bilge runner base and then I shall have to go to the old uh, chandlers and see what they've got there for fixings and either use bronze or stainless bolts and penny washers. Well I think that wraps up this episode, I've got a bit of work done, I'm not sure if this workbench is just a little bit lower than the one in the Dream Factory next door because uh, I did a lot of planing yesterday and my back was a bit stiff in the unit, like I was bending over a bit too far, I'll have to measure it and see, I've made it for someone else and then uh, they decided that uh, they'd gift it back to me because uh, they didn't uh, want to carry on with what they were wanting to do with it in the first place. So I've got the bilge runners to uh, plane up and uh, then fit to the curve of the boat with a bit of steam and uh, funnily enough that brings me back to something that was said at the woodyard when I bought the plank and I couldn't find anything quite what I wanted uh, with the, for the vertical grain wise. I said about using maybe if they got any um, sort of box of timber that were square rather than planked and he said oh well you get that problem of when you start cutting it it starts moving around and listening again to someone else I forgot entirely about the fact that I have the means and the technology such as it is technology to straighten things out so I'm learning a bit more every time because I know from doing the keel that I can straighten out and if I really sort of thought about it maybe I could have straightened out even more but as it is the front of the tip of the keel where it tapers down is only about 10 mil out if that if that so that was pretty good for a rough guess of straightening that out and 
like I say, if I measured it and worked it out, I could probably have brought it back even straighter. As it is, it's not an issue because it will come straight with the bolts going in. So, back to that old thing again about trust your own instincts rather than someone else who doesn't really necessarily know what things are capable, you know, what things are possible to do. And I know now that's not an issue. And also, uh, before I say goodbye, I'd like to give a shout out to someone who um, has just started putting up films. She's done a couple of films and they're really interesting because they are using bits of kit that I've got. And she shows you how to fill a firebox and one of the wood gas stoves to give a nice long burn. And uh, I'd like to say, hello Rebecca, Rebecca Olsen Adams, that's her channel name. And uh, keep putting some, put some more videos out. I think uh, what you've got to say is, uh, is you know, interesting and anyone can pick up a, a tip from someone because everyone does things differently. And I, uh, I'm pleased to see that she's put out some. She's always been a good supporter of my channel and others as well because I see her name crop up on the comments on other channels. So um, more power to her. Right, see you all soon. Cheerio.